So I've been debating all day <clears throat> on telling this story or not. But uh, it popped up in my mind, so I was sitting there and I was like, well, I told everybody if these memories pop up. And this one usually pops up around this time of year, because of course that's when it happens, around this time of year. And of course, 4th of July, this is 4th of July weekend, so that's definitely a trigger. <clears throat> so, let's see, this would have been like 2004 or so. Uh, what, I was 18, 19, something like that. I think I was 19 at the time, just turned 19. Nope, I would have been 18. Um, we were sitting there, and I, I worked for this rancher, farmer guy, right? And I was I was a farmhand. Well, he owned 10,000 acres, and it was pretty much all together. There was a couple little pieces. But me and his son were tasked with checking the fences. Um, and he had problems with people uh, either cooking meth or growing pot on his land which at that time was not legal so it was a big problem because since it's on your land you're responsible for it and the way he had it is you did not leave the house without a gun ever um, and we were sitting there and how we would fix a fence is you would go out and you would load up the tractor and a trailer and you'd put all the bob wire and everything you have on it you'd, you'd head out and so we'd have water, everything, because we would be gone for three weeks to a month fencing because we had to clear out 10 feet on either side of this fence line, restring up fence if it needed it and everything else like that. It's time consuming. It hasn't been done in 10 years, you know, a lot of, and his cows were getting out. So with that being backstory, <clears throat> we're out there and we kept smelling other campfires at night uh, because we'd keep a real small one mind you it was this time of year so I mean you don't need much of a campfire and we kept smelling like diesel burning and he had a map of his property and mind you his son was like 15 16 like that he was a good boy though he was a good good guy uh, so I had a 9 millimeter, and I also had a um M1 Grant. It was his grandfather's from World War II. And he had a Winchester uh, lever action. And I think he had a 22. We called it a snake charmer. And uh, so we were out there, we're working. Well, we kept getting in the, we kept hearing stuff and everything else like that. And we've been pushing and pushing. Well, eventually we're like, hey, we gotta, we gotta see what's going on. We're we're not by ourselves out here, so we took two days off, searching. We knew somebody else was out there. We didn't know what it was, mind you. We have no radio, no cell phone, nothing. Our way of contacting, freaking his dad, which had a phone at the house, was three gunshots. That's how we contacted him. That's how he contacted us. Anybody knows three gunshots means it's SOS. It's an emergency. Well, I was on this bottom part of this hill. And his son, I'm not going to say his name because why, um, was pushing a little bit further up, almost on the ridge line, but just about three yards off from it. But we came, he hit a saddle and it, so he had to go down and then come back up. Mine, I just kind of handed it around. Well, I was sitting there, and I hear a crack. And it was a gunshot. And I hit the damn deck. And uh, it was followed up by repeated rounds. And I knew right off the bat what it was. It was an AK-47. And then I realized it wasn't just one, but multiple. And I said, holy shit. So mind you, I got an M1 Grand. I only have the clip that's in it and freaking two others. All right, I'm not, I left, because this shit's heavy, right? So I don't have much ammo. And I did not have my sidearm. And luckily, uh, mind you, this took place in Arkansas, very heavily forested. 
so the trees were eating up a lot, but there was AK round go through a damn tree. It matters on the size, but it'll go through a damn tree. And so I'm sitting there, I'm like, fuck. I get behind a log, and there was a, a tree here, and that log fell down right next to it. And I'm sitting there, and this log is getting chewed up because it's been rotten for a while. And I heard a magazine hit up there. So, mind you, I'm fighting uphill. And that's the worst damn thing, to fight up damn hill. Screw that. I'd rather fight downhill all damn day long. And uh, so as soon as I heard that, and it was like a little law, and they already dumped freaking three, three freaking magazines down. Um, so I pop up, I put that freaking M1 on the damn uh, tree there. And I was looking, I mean, I can't see much. And I see something shiny. Now, I know my friendly is off to the right. And I know he's heard all this. And so I take aim and I start plugging. And you got to be sparing because you only have eight rounds in there. And uh, I remember I was, I was sitting there shooting. And I freaking, there's a distinctive sound. And it freaking went, da -ding -ding, and it ejected it. I said, oh my God. And freaking, I could hear them up there. And they're like, they're returning fire. And they had a radio. We did not have a radio. And I heard them on the radio. And I knew that there was three or more people up there. I could hear them rummaging around and whatnot. And then they start returning more fire. Heavier this time. There was about four guns going off. I heard about, you could hear it crackling. And they were getting close because you can hear them whizzing by. And I'm sitting there and I hear a beautiful sound of that Winchester with that 30 out 6 oh, go off. And what he did is he flanked them. And he's on their left flank, which would be my right flank. And I hear that. So I jump up and I start pumping. And we hear them starting to retreat, and then we hear them get on a four-wheeler. I'm like, holy crap, we ain't even got this. And they're out of there. It might have might have been a four-wheeler in a cart. I don't know. And uh, we got up there and whatnot, and, I mean, <laughs> we looked at it. There was over, like, 700 rounds on the ground that they freaking fired. And he's like, are you hit? Are you hit? I said, no. And it was about two hours later, we start hearing fucking helicopters. So his dad heard all this. And he called in the sheriff, called in the law. <clears throat> and it took him two hours. Because, I mean, we just sit still. We knew, you know, I mean, it, that much gunfire. You know, house is about a mile away. And I'm in, the, in them hollers, he heard it. And, uh, and we freaking, let me tell you, the freaking cops showed up there. <laughs> because... Everybody's freaking suspect at that point in time, you know, but what it was is they had a uh, freaking about a quarter acre of freaking pot plants up there. That's what they were protecting. Those motherfuckers tried killing me over some fucking pot plants. And all what I was doing was fixing fit and slime. That's all I was doing. People, like for fuck's sakes, really, dude? Worst that we would have said was like, you got to get off the land, dude. You're legally on, you know, get the fuck off. You can't have that. These motherfuckers tried killing a motherfucker over some fucking plants. Now it's legal in most states. That's funny as hell. I was thinking about that. So, this 4th of July, that always kind of triggers it a little bit. Is Not the ones that are up close, but those distance, the distant freaking fireworks that you hear off out in the distance. And then they got these little whistler bastards. I hate them motherfuckers. But, uh, so yeah. There's some other crap that, uh, I'm pretty sure feeds into my PTSD. So there's another story. I was thinking of another one earlier, but sorry this one took so long. A lot happened in a, such a short time. A lot happens when, uh, you're getting fired at. <laughs>